All right, let's talk about discontinuities and asymptotes in this lesson. Uh, let's see here. Um, starting with discontinuities, we have three main types of discontinuities. They are infinite, removable, and jumps. Uh, I'm going to talk about just the most common type of function that has these. There are other functions that have these types of discontinuities, but we're going to focus on the most common ones. The infinite, also known as a vertical asymptote, typically happens in rational functions when the denominator is zero. Now, you can also have infinite discontinuities in trig functions, logarithmic graphs. There are other types of functions that have these, but we're going to focus on the most common ones. And before you find your infinite discontinuities, you always want to factor. This will factor to x plus 3, x minus 3. The bottom factor is x plus 2, x plus 4. And you always want to cancel and simplify your function before you find your discontinuities. In this case, nothing cancels. And if nothing cancels, then you look at your denominator. And whatever makes your denominator equal to 0, in this case, that would be negative 2 and negative 4. Whoa. Why can't I write x? equals negative 4. There we go. Uh, negative 2 and negative 4 are the infinite discontinuities. And there are no other discontinuities. Um, discontinuity. There are no other discontinuities in this function. Um, so there is an infinite slash vertical asymptote. Uh, moving on to removable discontinuities, also known as holes, also typically occur in rational functions. Uh, they can occur in piecewise functions and some other obscure functions, but usually they occur in rational functions. And just like vertical asymptotes, you want to factor and cancel. This numerator is going to factor to, uh, let's see, I know I need a 2x and an x. Factors of 12, I'm going to need to get a 5 somehow. Let's try a 3 and a 4. I think this will work. Uh, positive 5, so I need a minus 3 and a plus 4. There we go. Crap writing, but whatever. Denominator factors x plus 4, x minus 4. Okay, you always want to factor and cancel. In this case, x plus 4 cancels. Now, whatever factor cancels, the x coordinate that makes that 0 is your removable discontinuity or your hole or the holes at x equals negative 4. Uh, I did not ask for infinite discontinuities, but the x minus 4 did not cancel. That means whatever makes that equal to 0 is a vertical asymptote. So there are removable discontinuities. And moving on to jumps. Um, you can have jumps in other types of functions, but they usually happen in piecewise functions. Uh, your greatest integer function has a buttload of jumps. Uh, some absolute value rational functions can have jumps in them. In this case, I'm going to look at the piecewise function. This kind of intimidates people, but to find out if there's a jump or any discontinuity, the first thing you want to do is look at the functions that create the, uh, the pieces. So I'm going to look at these functions right here first, and I'm going to ignore the transition points. And if you look at these, I have a line, a parabola, and another line. There are no discontinuities in those three functions by themselves. Uh, so I don't have to worry about those, but I do need to look at, whoa, go away. I do need to look at the transition points um, because I swap from the line, from that top line, I swap from that line to the parabola at an x coordinate of 1. So there is a possible discontinuity at 1 where I made that transition. Then I swap from the parabola to this bottom line at x equals 4. So there's another possible discontinuity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to organize this in a chart. Uh, let's see, I have a something occurring at x equals 1. Um, and then I have something at another transition at x equals 4. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find where my uh, functions are at those x coordinates. Now my top one is only valid for x is less than 1. So this one's going to start. Uh, I really don't care where it starts, but I know that this function will end when x equals 1. My top function has a y coordinate of 2 times 1 plus 1 of 3. Uh, and 4 doesn't apply because 4 is not less than 1. My bottom function when x is equal to 1, that's where this thing starts. This starts at 1 squared plus 2, which is 3. So it's going to start at a y coordinate of 3. And it will end at a y coordinate of, when I plug in 4, 16 plus 2 is 18. 
So when x is 1, my middle function is going to start at 3, and it will end at 18. Uh, now, if I look at where my top function ended and my middle function began, you'll notice that they both are at y equals 3. That means there is no jump, no discontinuity. That is the same y-coordinate. So they actually meet, and there's no discontinuity at 1, right? So those are the same. Therefore, no discontinuity at x equals 1. Uh, now I need to think about what's happening at 4. Uh, I already know my middle function ends at 18. My bottom function, if I plug in 4, 4 minus 1 is 3. All right, there's a discontinuity. My middle function is ending at 18. However, when the line x minus 1 starts, it's way down at 3. Those are different coordinates. So since these are, the, are different, what we have here is a jump at x equals 4. Uh, later on in the year when we get into limits and calculus, we're going to have a different way to go about proving this, but for now we're going to stick with this kind of basic, simple way of determining whether there's a jump. Uh, so there are the discontinuities, and then real quick we're going to talk about asymptotes. Uh, we have already talked about asymptotes, uh, vertical asymptotes. Uh, you always want to factor and cancel. Uh, here the x minus 2's cancel, which means there's a hole at x equals 2. Uh, the x minus 3 does not cancel. That means there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. Now remember, uh, asymptotes are lines, so they need to be written in linear equation form. Don't say there's a vertical asymptote at 3. That's not a line. That's just a number. You have to say x equals 3. It's a vertical line. Uh, moving on to horizontal asymptotes. These are the ones where you have to memorize the three rules. Um, and there are some other functions that have horizontal asymptotes, but we're going to focus on the main ones, and that's these rational functions. And that's when you look at the degree on top and bottom. If your top degree is bigger than the bottom, then you have no horizontal asymptotes. If the top is equal to the bottom, you divide the coefficients. And if the top degree is less than the bottom, or if the bottom is bigger, then your horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. And again, remember, they are lines. It needs to be y equals some number. Every horizontal asymptote is y equals a number. It's not just a number. So in these three, I have 2x squared. Uh, my top degree in this first one is 2, bottom degree is 3, my bottom is bigger, so the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0 for this first example. This one, my top degree is 3, and pay attention because your degree is not always the first term. Here I have a degree of 3, my bottom degree is actually my last one, which means I need to divide the coefficients of those two terms, which in this case would be negative 3 halves. And again, that's a line, so it's y equals negative 3 halves. And in this one, my top degree is 2, bottom degree is 1, my top degree is bigger than the bottom. That means there is no horizontal asymptote. So there's a blitz of horizontal asymptotes. And the very last one is the slant asymptote. We do not deal with slant asymptotes very much, but the only time you have a slant asymptote is when your top degree is exactly one more than the bottom degree. In this case, my top degree is 3, bottom degree is 2. So to get the horizontal asymptote, you have to go through the hassle of long dividing, or if possible, you could use synthetic division, but you can't do that in this case, long dividing the numerator into the denominator. So 2x cubed uh, plus 4x squared. There is no x to the first term, so I'm going to put a 0x to hold that spot, and then minus 7. And then if you don't remember how to do this, you look at your first term, x squared times what is 2x cubed, and that would be 2x. Then you multiply 2x through the divisor, or is that the dividend? I think that's a divisor. Uh, so 2x times x squared is 2x cubed. 2x times 3 is 6x. That's actually going to meet up with this 0x. I'm going to stick it over here. And then you actually subtract that. So now I'll go through and I change the signs. And I subtract. 2x cubed minus x cubed is 0. I bring down the 4x squared. 0x minus 6x, and I'll go ahead and bring down the minus 7 also, and then we repeat the process. Uh, so x squared, see that goes away, x squared times 4 is 4x squared, then I'll distribute the 4, so that will be 4x squared plus 12, that plus 12 is going to go over here with this 7, and again we change the signs and subtract, so I'm going to subtract, subtract, 4x squared minus 4x squared is 0, I'm left with negative 6x minus a 19, and x squared will not go into that anymore, so that's my remainder, but when you're doing slant asymptotes, you disregard the remainder, so I don't care about that. This line is the slant asymptote, my, so my slant asymptote is the line y equals 2x plus 4, so there you go. Um, 
there's a blitz of asymptotes. Uh, now remember, when, if I ask for discontinuities, horizontal asymptotes are not discontinuities. So if I ask for discontinuities, please don't list the horizontal asymptotes. Same thing with slants. Discontinuity. So horizontal asymptotes are not discontinuities. Same thing for slant asymptotes. They are not discontinuities. They are just asymptotes. The only asymptote that is a discontinuity is the uh, vertical asymptote. So there we go. And that is all I wanted to go over quickly for discontinuities. There you go. And we'll polish this up later.